Hey guys and gals, Never here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something now on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Moonlight Castle, Dylan's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> and we became friends. I'd say that was the best outcome. I grabbed some packages of milk and water as I thought back to the memories, and then we looked at each other. We won't do that anymore. That's because I don't need to catch you at the toilet in order to have a talk anymore. I chuckled. That was indeed an improvement. I miss those short conversations we used to have. It made my days a little better, back when I still didn't have anyone to talk to. Blake paused. He took a bit of time to ponder my words. Should I bring back the random questions? The wolf spoke again as he helped me pick up more food. Here's not, here's not the restroom, though. Less secluded. Think you can handle it? Just ask already. He looked around briefly, and once he was sure that no one was nearby, he leaned closer to whisper in my ear. Are you gay? I almost jumped when he asked the question. Having moved away slightly, I shrugged it off with an awkward sigh. What? You're crazy, I'm... I'm pansexual, if that helps. Upon hearing that, I became less stressed and more curious. Y you are? The wolf chuckled and he bumped his fist on my shoulder. Ha! Gotcha! There's no way a heterosexual would know what that means. I puffed my cheeks at such generalizations. That's rude! Why wouldn't they? Well, they could, but it's more likely they weren't straight if they knew what it went, well, knew what it meant. Pansexuality is difficult to explain to the masses, so most pansexuals think they're better off telling everyone they're gay or bi, and that's only if they want to come out. I, however, prefer to keep that information to myself, and I'm sure most pansexuals also do the same. Most heterosexuals don't have to try so much to explore themselves, and often lack the need to look up any of the labels, so it's unlikely that they find the term on their own. Therefore, unless someone explicitly told them, I doubt they'd know. But what if the masses actually know? And good for them. It's important that they learn about the minorities. I guess that makes a little sense. It was irritating to me that his words were true, though. People should really try to learn more about the minorities. So, are you gay? He leaned forward, his upper body looming over me. The wolf seemed eager to know if he could pull me out of the closet. You won't hate me? Of course not. I was still hesitant about admitting the truth, even though it was already obvious at this point. And you won't think that I'm weird either? By that logic, I'd be weirder than you, and this isn't a competition. Nervously running my hand through my fur on the back of my neck, I sighed. I took all my mental energy just to give him a light nod as a response. I see. I raised my chin to look at his eyes, but the lids were still covering them. I wondered if he knew I was knew I even knew I was staring. Can I ask you something too? It must it must have been a hassle to answer all the things I threw at you. I'd say you deserve to hear what you want to hear from me too. It was one thing that I'd always wanted to ask him, but I'd been too shy to ever dare speak about it, afraid that it might upset him. Okay, here it comes. I took a gulp, trying to quell my anxiety. I've always wondered why you keep your eyes closed most of the time. I wish I hadn't said that, but there was no backing off now. Is your eyesight bad? Then, as if to prove something, the wolf slowly opened his eyes to the fullest. I'd seen those eyes only when he was looking at the sky or when he was mad at someone, but right now he didn't look angry. He always surprised me, you know? I wasn't used to be seeing Blake with those eyes. He looked almost like a different person. Should I not have asked? The opposite, actually. To be honest, I usually get this question around the first week I get to know someone. But you never asked me about it, although we've known each other for quite some time now. I thought it might have been something private. I wasn't sure bringing it up would hurt you. It wasn't like I needed to know it in order to consider you one of my friends. The wolf leaped at me. My vision darkened for a moment, then I realized that my face was buried in his fur. He was squeezing me in a hug. That's the nicest thing someone's ever said to me. Thank you. And then a second after that, he pulled himself back, hastily. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to do that. What you just said really touched me. I hope it didn't cross the line. It's fine. I'm fine. Though, maybe warn me about it next time. I'll keep that in mind. It felt kind of nice, actually, and I was a little disappointed that it ended so fast. Got everything you needed? I'll answer your question on the way back. Clyde is going to get mad if I don't stick to his schedule. I tried to picture in my head the frowny face of the council's president, I ended up frowning myself. I couldn't imagine that a guy like him would be able to express such emotions, just the thought alone felt foreign to me. Have you ever seen him mad? No, though I've seen him, I've seen his not mad, just disappointed face, and it feels like being scolded by a mother. Both of us let out a chuckle, and soon I finished my grocery shopping. We walked out of the building together afterward. Then we made a stop on the sidewalk in front of the mall in order to talk with each other. I need to bring these home before the meeting. We'll have to part ways here. You can stop stalling now. That's unfortunate. Spending time with you is just so relaxing. Time goes too fast. 
He sat on a bench that was nearby and he invited me to join him so that he could tell me the answer I'd been waiting for. I have trouble sleeping. They told me years ago that it was insomnia, but I haven't gone back to check it out again. That explains the baggy eyes you have. Do you take any medicine? Yes, yeah, sometimes. I try not to abuse it, but it's not that simple. Is that why you always keep your eyes closed? It's a lack of sleep. I'm so tired that I can't keep my eyes open, so I'll let them rest unless I really have to use them. My sense of smell and hearing ended up improving since I rely so much on them to know my surroundings. You made it sound so cool, and you shouldn't have. Hmm, <clears throat> we depend too much on our eyesight. I think it's cool that I can tell who's just, who, is, uh, who it is just by listening to their footsteps. Okay, that's cool and all, but don't you still have trouble sleeping? You look tired all the time. It's manageable. I feel both tired and not tired at the same time. But eventually gets used to it. Any idea the cause of it? He paused. His tired look was never too obvious to me, but now that he told me about it, I couldn't help but noticing it all the time. He looked at the sky, and his eyes were fully opened once again. I don't know. I think maybe it's just meant to be? I'm fine with how things currently are. I raised a brow at him. What he said didn't make any sense to me. I'd think that someone who was born with such a condition wouldn't be able to f wouldn't find himself able to put up with it that well. Do you... like it? Huh? Of course not. What kind of question is that? Then you're not fine with it. Are you trying to sugarcoat the fact that you're in pain? Please don't lie to me. Blake went silent. So he got up from his seat and pulled out a cigarette from his pocket. Look at now. It's complicated. I didn't lie, but what you said isn't wrong either. The wolf then started to march. Likely on his way back to Clyde. Blake! He came to a halt upon hearing me call his name. He turned around. His eyes were half hiding behind his lids, much like my face under my hat most times. Why don't we play this game, some game again some other time? I'll ask you a question. You answer truthfully and then get to ask me something too. It was fun. Got me thinking. How he damn played the problem, treating it as some game pissed me off. I stood up and yelled after him. Fine! Next time we hang out, I'll, I'll get you to admit how you really feel. He grinned. Ah, yes, I love that energy. Maybe one day I'll ask you to pose for a drawing. Who knows? Later, Joel. Blake waved as he walked away, and I kept staring at him until the crowd eventually hid him from my sight. I grabbed my grocery bags and hurried home. The time of our appointment was fast approaching, and I was being way too slow. Thankfully, my apartment was near all the places that I needed to be. Seeing my pantry filled with actual food brightened my mood a little. While that work seemed to pay off now, and it was quite rewarding. I took a glance at my computer and skimmed the messages that I didn't read, but it seemed that nothing important happened. Our plans remained unchanged. I took a moment to rest and charged up my phone before I headed to Russell's. I wanted to arrive early and wait for the others to join me. This could be my chance to take a closer look at Russell's job and see the bull in action with no interruption. He didn't share much about his life, so I was hoping to catch a glimpse of it by myself. I wasn't sure what I expected to see upon arriving at the shop. However, the sight I had surely, the sight I had surely left me with a taste of disappointment. The bull was serving drinks to a couple of elders in the corner. The two elders were playing cards with one another, and there was no sign of any other tables being used. Was the place really doing as well as uh, uh, doing well as much as Russell had claimed that it was? I thought about it for a while before I managed to shake it off my head and sit myself at my usual spot. The counter was the only thing separating me from separating him and me. You're the first to come. I didn't have many classes today. Russell. An unfamiliar voice whispered from the back, causing the bull to immediately turn around. What are you doing here? You should be resting still. I could hear the owner of that new voice of that new voice coughing trying to speak, and Russell sounded worried. The bull pushed the other person back inside the room and followed him in. No, yes. Maybe next time. Yes. Food. Yes. Fine. I could barely hear Russell's responses to the person, but I couldn't hear anything from the person that the bull was talking with. As soon as the bovine returned to the counter, I asked him, Who is that? The owner. He's stubborn and sometimes incredibly stupid. Stupid. Second hill. Water time. Alright guys and gals, we are back. Let's jump back into it, shall we? His face contorted into a grimace as he continued to speak. If you're sick, you stay in bed and rest, and I'll walk down the stairs for dumb reasons. Maybe it was something important. You asked him about it. He wanted to meet my quote-unquote friends. That's adorable, just like a father would. Adoptive father, yes. Awkwardly, I tried to laugh it off. I was hit by the feeling that I'd said something I shouldn't have, and it was hitting me like a truck. I, I didn't know. You didn't ask, either. This place is a family business, and the owner is also my adoptive father. He seemed nice. Yeah. I tried my best to save the conversation, but it seemed Russell didn't want to, didn't want to open up, and he was pushing me away. I tapped my fingers on the table, frustrated at myself. 
Then I rested my head on the counter and psyched myself into the seat. My childhood wasn't good, Joel. It isn't something we should talk about, that's all. I tilted my face back up with me and met with a cup of hot chocolate. For me? On the house. You like it. I stared at the shaky reflection of my face in the drink before taking a sip. The warmth surely helped ease the stress that had been piled up on me. However, rather than, rep than repress my feelings, I began to vent them out like some drunk guy on a Saturday night. My father abandoned me when I was young. Mom took on both roles and raised me alone. It wasn't the best, but neither was it the worst. I wasn't trying to compare myself to him or say that my childhood could be worse than, that worse than his. Rather, I was trying to express that I could understand where he might be coming from. Sometimes, I wonder why. What pushes a man to leave everything behind and disappear just like that? Maybe he had a reason? I even wanted to meet him and ask him about it, but I could never dare speak to him with, speak about him with Mom. It's not easy to deal with betrayal. I know that myself. Mom started dating this guy, and everything became so much worse. I reached for my cup to have another sip, but it was freely em already empty. They say it's easier to speak when you're drinking. It seems you've been bottling up your feelings. My ears flickered at his words. It might be true, but I wasn't looking for advice right now. When did we swap our roles? I was trying to hear you out. Bartenders can't mix their personal life and job. The ability to stay neutral and impartial is an essential quality in our line of work. I felt defeated. Russell was way harder to pry into than anybody else. The thing I'd said worked. If you were to ask me when I wasn't working, though, things would be different. That was the light I needed to see at the end of the tunnel. My body bounced right up from the counter. Can I? I mean, if it's not a problem, of course. Yes, as long as you keep everything that happened here a secret. I have my reasons. Oh, sure. I wonder what the reason was, but I knew that he wouldn't tell me. Maybe he didn't like to reveal whether he was adopted. Honestly, that didn't matter to me, but I was still too afraid to say anything. What if my assumptions were wrong? That'd be the most embarrassing thing I did this year yet. Someone is thinking! I snapped my away from my thoughts and back to reality as I felt the big arms wrapped around me and the giant fluff brushing the side of my neck. I turned my head a little to see, if, to see and found Ryan's face squished on the counter. It was as if he was trying to peek at my face without bothering me. Yeah, I'm thinking about things a little bit. Gently, I pushed away the dork and fixed my posture in the process. Today I didn't get to hang out with much with anyone, and I got busy with a couple of assignments. What about you? How was your day? Did you manage to join Clyde? I, sh I shared with the bear almost everything that happened, other than the affairs with Dylan and Russell, which I promised to keep secret. That's great to hear. Seems you had an amazing day. Did you save any space for little old Ryan, though? There's always space for my best friend. We don't leave anyone behind, right? Huh. <laughs> Hey, that's what I say. I laughed and so did he right afterward. Subconsciously, I leaned myself back, leaned myself on his back. It was something that I always did. His coat was soft, cozy, and thick enough for me to comfortably sink into it. It was like a portable mattress of the highest quality. The tickles! Should I go to the restroom first and give you guys some private space? Suddenly, Liam popped in from behind us, and then out of embarrassment, I covered my face with my head as soon as I realized how Ryan and I must have looked just now. We weren't doing anything. It's all my fault. I could hear that Liam was holding back a chuckle. The next thing I knew that, and the next thing I knew was that he was trying to pull me away from Ryan's back. I can't take you seriously if you look like that. It's all the weird shenanigans, anyway. But Joel was feeling down, so he snuggled into onto my back. I don't see anything weird about it. We're just being supportive and showing affection. That was Ryan. That was Ryan. That, the way Ryan described the scene made me unable to keep a straight face. It sounded so bad that it was getting only redder and more flush, and Liam simply continued to just try his best to wrestle me out of my hat. The little dignity I had left in me was nowhere safe, it seemed. You should drop it before Joel pops like a balloon. All right, all right, my bad. I wasn't sure why, but it looked like Ryan was upset, and he was also, for some reason, trying hard to hide the fact that he was upset. Did something happen to him during the day? Or maybe he was pissed because of Liam. All right, y'all, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Kate Silverman. Thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.